right. Well, we are chatting with Sam Yates about this wonderful film, Magpie, a neo-noir type style film, but just filled with so many wonderful things. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for your time and thanks for hanging out today. I really do appreciate it. My pleasure, Brett. Thank you. Well, this is a very fun, uh, thrilling, interesting type film. Uh, the story I I find so interesting because I kind of feel like it's something that could potentially exist or happen <laughs> uh, in this day and age. But I'm interested to know when you get presented the script, what was it particularly about it that attracted you to it? Well, I guess the first thing I really responded to was this like character Ben and the kind of theme of like escape fantasies, you know, when you're like, my life would be perfect if I was just with that person, like everything would be fine. I'd be physically fit. I'd have no stress, no pain. Life would be great. I sort of really liked the kind of um, like foolishness of that in, in his character. And by the same token, I really liked Annette, who's a woman who's very kind of diminished and very suppressed and kind of finds throughout the film a way to uh, like loosen off that suppressed energy and then channel it into something kind of powerful and interesting. So those are the two themes really that kind of caught my eye. Yes, I find that very true. Uh, I mean, from script to screen, it can be several different journeys for you. Uh, is that the case or is it clearly maybe one big journey from when you get approached to filming to releasing it? And obviously the press part is a different journey, but insofar as like developing these characters and choosing whom you're going to cast uh, for these roles. Well, it's a long, it's a longish journey. Right? So each stage of it has its own very particular and very intense kind of section. So I guess the first one was like pitching the script and and getting it and then starting to work with Tom on the script and and Daisy and making it as visual and cinematic as we possibly could and going in some areas which perhaps needed a little bit more like attention or like uh, embellishment like Annette at home for example we worked really hard to um kind of we wanted to go back to Annette more do you know what I mean and not forget about her when we went to set so that sort of thing and then obviously as you say your casting that was a very fun process on this the shoot the edit and now you know we're releasing and here we are so each stage has been its own thing and kind of you know all pretty important you know yeah absolutely i mean it all conglomerates to the story which we get to see now when you're looking at this and you're reading it do you go into this with ideas of daisy being the person that you want for it do you envision that based on things you've seen other actors do or is it a more collaborative process because when I mean, the cast you've picked is perfect really well on this one it was very specific that date is it, the film is based on original idea by daisy so she and tom who are both producers on the film as well were attached so to speak to the film because they created it when they came to me so daisy was always attached and she's ad latif was also attached as ben which was kind of a gift um, so that's where I came onto it. And then, yeah, then we put together the rest of the cast sort of around them. So it's very helpful once you have your kind of le leads in place that you can build a sort of group of actors that make sense for the, the world you're trying to make. Yes. Well, we have him in a couple of days, so I'm excited to talk to him and get his perspective. So when people watch, you know, again, there are several themes and elements to this. What are you hoping audiences latch on to? Uh, because this film just hits in so many different ways. Well, <clears throat> I suppose like you want you want audiences to be tense, like and thrilled, and like what is going to happen. Mm. So you know, the sense of escalating tension and also mystery. Like I think mystery is really really underrated. Like not showing uh, is not is unusual these days so you know that was an exercise in making the film is knowing how little you could show and, and still not lose people um and hopefully we've achieved a sort of the right balance there <laughs> yeah i would definitely say so so as a filmmaker when you're doing this are you going to other influences in your mind things that have impacted you uh and so so to speak brought out those emotions that you're bringing out uh, in this film, and in, in hopes that the audience, as you say, uh, meets you there. 
Definitely, definitely. I mean, the first thing when you're kind of making a film in a certain genre, for me anyway, is to go completely headfirst into that genre. And then <clears throat> it was about finding a kind of visual language for various parts of the story. So we looked a lot at John Demme's work, uh, especially in like Silence of the Lambs and Philadelphia, the kind of subjective POV stuff. Um, Paul Thomas Anderson was, always is a huge influence, I think, in terms of like composition and how to use camera in certain ways. And then we looked at like The Shining quite a bit and um, Michael Haneke's film Hidden, you know, those kind of, and then Chinatown and like then some Fincher movies, which just sort of, you know, generated tension in domestic environment. So <clears throat> there's a kind of like big playpen of those films that we were like diving into. And then you, you steal as much as you possibly can from those brilliant filmmakers and then try to then kind of like um, like bring it all together in a really coherent and original way for the story you're trying to tell. But it's one of the great pleasures of directing is to be able to dive into other films in detail and see how people before you or your contemporaries are, are doing it and still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, now that you mentioned that, that's one of the main reasons, well, several, but one of the reasons I was looking forward to speaking with you was I did pick up on a little bit of that, you know, as far as that. Um, the topic of subtext often comes up with these types of films, like messages for you. Uh, are you the type of director who likes to let the subtext set up front for people to get, or do you enjoy and watch the audience have to work a little bit and sort of figure out what that might be uh, in a film like this in particular, that's so well uh, written and starred and directed in? Well, it was, I think Paul Thomas Anderson, he said like a little bit of confusion up front is like much better than something that's completely clear and over explained i totally agree with that it's like when it's like you know <clears throat> when you can't quite figure something out it's very it's very like moorish you know when you're like it's almost right it's like 90 95 clear but there's something just off so i think it was like trying to keep that balance of you you think you know what's going on but there's just a sort of energy or a subtext of of unease underneath that which is enough to keep you on the train i hope and want to know where the hell you're going so yeah a bit of mystery bit of things not declared things happening in the background i mean it's a film about what you show and what you don't show right most definitely with no spoilers <laughs> yes that is very true well thank you so much it's been an honor uh, I appreciate your time. Congratulations. And I'm looking forward to speaking to you next time. And of course, your cast and such a great film. Uh, I hope uh, audiences watch. And uh, it really just gives hope for the love of cinema, I think, and really good storytelling. Uh, but thank you for your time and congratulations. It's been an honor chatting with you. So much, Brett. Likewise. Thank you for your time.